straight. I'm still waiting for Dana to come in to check so I can go buy my real one. Did you get it down to Canal Street? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. So you gambled on yourself big time here. Do you feel like uh, you're going to be rewarded? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think I put on a really great performance. And um, I think I opened up a lot more with my striking, which people probably want to see a lot more of. And um, I, try, I try to tell people, man, I can strike if I really want to. It's more so just being comfortable with the little gloves. And I think I've been doing a lot more training with the little gloves and uh, being able to see those punches and those kicks come in. And I think um, that translated tonight when I was able to, to evade a lot of his attacks and still set up my punches, set up my kicks, and uh, ultimately get my takedown to stick to my bread and butter and strangle somebody. And that's what I did tonight. He left his neck out there. All I needed was an opportunity, and he gave it to me. Did you see any openings? Because you know you managed to you know get into the ground before. Did you see him maybe do anything to leave any openings that made you think that you might get that later? In previous fights? Yeah. Uh, not really. I just know he fought he fought Rafael Sanzao. Rafael Sanzao is not a great wrestler, but he was able to take him down, and uh, that gave me confidence because I'm a two-time All American. I train with the best in the world, and I just know my takedowns and uh, my style of wrestling is just a lot different from these other guys. So. That gave me confidence knowing that I could get him down. I just had to be patient, set it up, not run into any knees, not run into a head kick. And um, I, did, I think I did a good job, good job with that, pacing myself. Started off a little bit slow in that first round, which kind of pissed me off a bit, but um, I had to get comfortable. I haven't fought since freaking April, man. You know, it was one of those things where I try to, I want to fight more often, be more active. My first, when I went pro, I fought five times in one year. And to go to fighting once or twice in a year is kind of like, that, I think ring rust is a, it's a true thing. You can spar as much as you want, but. At the end of the day, it's nothing like getting in there and getting the realistic feel of someone trying to throw some gear at you. So, there's a lot of talk about you, your frustrations with the UFC. People might assume you're a little angry going into the cage. Were you emotional when you went in? Did you really feel like, listen, I'm going to shut these people up with a spectacular performance tonight? No, nah, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely not upset or angry with the UFC. I understand how this thing goes. and I'm a reasonable guy. I use my head. I think I'm a smart person. And... Um, if I do say so myself, but when I look at the landscape of the division, I think back to when I fought Mizugaki. I was unranked. I was supposed to fight Manny Gambiri with both unranked fighters. Then that allows for more opportunities, more guys for me to fight, because now with two unranked guys, there's a lot of unranked guys in the division. Now, I step up to the plate and fight a guy who's ranked sixth in the world. I take him out in the third round in a way that hasn't been done in over about 20 years, and then uh, now there's nobody for me to fight because everyone is hurt, so I'm kind of in this weird void. And I think that's what it, what it came down to. And um, I understand my whole thing was, don't tell me that nobody wants to fight me. And then when I go to social media and call people out and people are like, hey, they're raising their hands, I'll fight you. Tell, tell Shelby, yeah, tell, tell Dana, I'll sign a check, send me the contract and things like that. I'm like, well, it seems like I got a couple dance partners, so let's make this thing happen. I don't give, I don't give a damn if I'm ranked six in the world or seventh, whatever it is I'm ranked at the time. And these guys are unranked. I just want to fight, get paid, get, get experience, so I can get comfortable when I get my chance to fight for the belt. You seem like you had a lot of fun out there, from the striking to the dancing afterwards. Is it about being entertained at the end of the day to get bigger fights? It's always about the entertainment aspect of it. Um, I don't know, people, I, I know it's people like the uh, the 80s look that I brought back, with the, the high top, the the uh, the part and um, the big rope chain and everything. So it's just about, you gotta be a character, man. You gotta be different. You don't gotta go WWE on them, but at the same time, you gotta be different. You gotta do something that's gonna stand out and people can kind of relate to or take to. And um, I think I did a good job with that. But at the end of the day, it's about having fun, man. We kill ourselves weeks after weeks, <laughs> racking our brains about this one person trying to take our heads off. And when you finally get the opportunity to step in there, sometimes, like even in the back room, I was telling these guys, I was like, man, this is the most anxiety I've ever felt before a fight and I felt like I was telling myself like maybe this guy's the one to slow me down and I had to get those negative thoughts out of my mind and I was just like you know what man you came too far you were so confident coming into this don't let the day of you, you break down and, and not do what you're supposed to do and I had to keep telling myself you're too tough you're too strong you're too quick and you can't be broken and I kept those negative thoughts out of my head and I went out there and I said 11 people tried 11 people failed one more is going to try one more is going to fail tonight do you feel like any of that anxiety may have been the, just the pressure that you've been putting on yourself leading up to this fight, knowing the implications of him? Yeah. Um, you know what's crazy? I don't I don't talk to my dad. He had a really big call now. And then um, this morning, my brother gets a phone call. And uh, my dad's birthday is actually on the 13th. And he's out here with my little sisters. And I, I don't speak to the guy. I haven't spoken to the guy in months. So I, there's, there's so many outside factors, so many things coming into this fight. I was banged up really bad. So many injuries, and I, so many times I thought I was like, man, this 
a good chance I might have to pull out this fight if things don't start to shape up. And I wasn't training hard the way I wanted to train hard. I'm used to training, and that kind of sucked. It, it definitely, like I said, the thing it plays doubts in your mind and things like that. But the whole thing with my dad, the whole thing with the last fight on my contract, not having to fight for so long, and you know, the people being behind me. There's no such thing as pressure unless you place it upon yourself. And I learned that from a great wrestler. That was a, a quote that sticks with me. And as like I was talking about earlier, I put the pressure on myself before that, and I started thinking a little bit negative. And I had to tell myself to just relax, man. Go out there and just, just have some fun, do what you do. And things don't go your way, things don't go your way. At the end of the day, just be happy with your performance. If you go out there and you perform, you're happy then that's all you can ever ask for. And I, that's what I did. I made sure I, I laughed a little bit, enjoyed the moment, and soak everything in. So what are you going to do then? Are you going to try to be a free agent? Are you going to try to talk to the UFC about what's next? I want to be with the UFC. I want to fight for the best in the world. And I want to... I want to be considered the best in the world, and I think everyone knows hands down, if you're the UFC champ, you're considered the best in the world. And um, I mean, arguably, you're the best in the world. There's some other organizations that have some top level guys as well, but I think this is the one that I think people pound for pound consider the best in the world if you are a UFC champ. And um, this is where I want to be. I just want to make sure they do things right by me and uh, take care of me, because at the end of the day, I got to provide for myself and my future. Um, I'm a college graduate. At some point, I need to go back and get my master's, but if, if MMA opens up other doors and other avenues, then, you know, more power to that. I'll just do that and stick that route. But at the end of the day, I got a plan for myself, and I got I to gotta look long-term and think about my future. I'm 26, going to be 30. I don't want to be one of those guys fighting well into their 30s, getting punched in the head and stuff like that. Nah, that's not for me, man. I want to get in, get out, make my money, say I, say I did it, had fun doing it, say I was one of the best in the world, and I think that's what it's all about, being able to say you are one of the best in the world and not just be a part of the journey. I mean, the journey's fun, but being a champ is a, is a great thing to have. I've never won anything in my life in terms of the, the pinnacle of a sport. Wrestling, I came up short two years in a row, actually four years of my collegiate career, and I think this is the one, my, my shot, to actually, be, to actually be able to solidify myself as one of the best in the world as something that I put my all into, and, and that's what I want to do. I want to become the best in the world in my division and what I do right now, which is mixed martial arts. If they stick to their guns, are you prepared to walk away? If they stick to their guns, am I prepared to walk away? Uh, I don't think anyone's sticking to their guns because I, I drove my gun a little bit faster, so. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna walk away, but I, I do think they see a prospect in me, and I do think they know I'm one of the next hot contenders. I know they got the other kid, Thomas Almeida. He's a stud, but um, I, I got my eye on that guy as well. So I, there's a lot of guys in this division I, that people try to count me out against, and keep counting me out, man. Keep doubting me, and I'm gonna keep proving everybody wrong one by one, and just keep knocking these guys down and choking them out left, left and right. You mentioned Almeida. Is he the only guy on your radar right now, or do you have somebody else that is? Well, I didn't say Almeida was on my radar. I just know he's a very talented kid, very talented prospect. I think the smart play on that is we'll see what happens with Frankie. Frankie, uh, Frankie, who's that guy? Frankie Signs. Frankie Signs and Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber wins. He's the next title challenger because he's the biggest fight um, at the division right now against Cruz or either Dill Shaw. And um, I either fight Rafael Sunsau in the title eliminator for the next slot, or maybe they do two undefeated guys coming up to fight for the belt next. But I think the smart play on that is I win the belt, I'm undefeated, Thomas Almeida comes up, and we have the, the next undefeated champions in the, the men's divisions. Uh, I think the last time we had that was Rashad Evans versus uh, Leo Machida. So I think that'd be something classic to go down in history, and I think that's that's the best way to play it, in my opinion. But we'll see what happens. If he's somebody has to fight sooner or later, then guess what? I'd rather get the guy before he gets really, really good. Are you going to meet up with your dad? Uh, I don't think so, unless he wants to meet up with me. But as of right now, <clears throat> there's uh, there's no love lost. I, I don't hate the guy. Just uh, we have our differences. We have our disagreements. And, Sometimes you just, some things just aren't meant to be patched up, and if, if they're meant to be, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But um, we'll see what happens. At this, at this point in time, from what I understand, he doesn't really want to talk to me. So I mean, he's out here. That might mean something. But uh, family issues, man. I think we all have them. Are you gonna stick around till Saturday for Chris? Oh, 100 percent. I'm waiting for Bruce Buffer to announce and still. So I'm definitely sticking around to watch Chris uh, go out there and prove Rockhold wrong, prove the world that. He's a legit guy, man. People just people just don't know the, the capabilities that that, ha that guy has. He just He does so little in terms of his fights. He doesn't open up and show too much of what he does. And I think he shows little glimpses of 
every single fight of his, his shades of greatness. And I think he's going to be one of those guys to actually retire undefeated and as a champion. Uh, why'd you call out Mayweather? Still, still wrong after that situation? I thought it was just. I thought the whole thing calling out Mayweather was just a funny thing. Um, he's undefeated, retired undefeated. That's a big money fight. So if that fight could actually happen, I'm all about it. So you know, and um, it'll definitely be an MMA fight, not a boxing fight, because I, I got a little more sense than that. But um, I just it was all fun and games. I got nothing against the guy. I think he's a special talent. And, uh, I actually like the guy. Besides him trying to pick up my girl, I think uh, he's a, he's cool by me. <laughs> Thank you.